Moisture meters. Is this a tool you should be using in the garden or with your house plants? That's the question I'm going to answer in this video. I'm going to explain what these are and how they work. Then I'm going to go through some pros and cons about using this for determining when to water your plants. Now the moisture meters I'm discussing in this video are these meters that are designed for home gardeners. There are more expensive models on the market and my comments don't apply to those necessarily. I'm talking about this kind of green meter. For some reason most of them are green. If you go on Amazon you'll see about 15 different manufacturers. They're all in the price range of about $10 to $15. Some only do moisture so they have one probe here. The one I'm using for my test is the Rappi Test Mini, and it does pH and moisture. It has a little switch to switch between them, and so it has two probes, one for pH and one for moisture. There are others on the market that will do moisture and light, and moisture and pH and light. And of course, if you have more than one test, you pay a little bit more for them. What's a bit funny is that there, there must be 24 different manufacturers of these. They all have different brand names but I'll bet they're made by one or two companies. If you have a close look, they're all the same. Most of them are green. The metal probes look identical. I'm sure one company makes all of these. Even the dials look the same on these meters. They just have different shapes. Some are square, some are round, but the important part is the same. They have a needle that goes left and right, and they have a scale from one to 10. One is very dry, 10 is very wet. I don't really think it matters which manufacturer you buy. But I do know that Rapid Test is an American company and they have a good reputation. So that's one to certainly consider. So how do these meters work? Well, the first thing that will probably surprise you is they don't measure moisture. What they do is they measure electrical conductance in the soil. How well does electricity move through the soil? And they interpret that and turn it into a number that you and I use for watering our plants. That works because there are two electrodes here at the bottom and they're separated by a little piece of plastic. Current travels from the lower part up here to the upper part. And then the meter measures that flow of current and that's an indirect measurement of moisture. Why is that important and why should you care? Well, the fact that it's measuring electricity means that there's a number of issues in soil that affect us. And we'll get to that in a few minutes. Now, when I first got this meter, I thought, okay, I'm going to get a meter and it's going to have this dial. And on one end, it's going to say water. At the other end, it's going to say don't water. That's not what you get. The meter doesn't actually tell you when to water. What it does is it gives you a number between 1 and 10. You have to figure out whether that number means to water or not water. Along with the meter, you also get a table of plants. And my meter didn't have very many on here, so I went on the internet and found a list from another manufacturer, and I'm sure I can use that for this meter. But you have to look up your plant and find out what number your plant should have. So let's do an example. Let's say your plant is a number five plant. And then you go and you measure your soil. If the reading you get is between six and 10, the soil is moist enough and you shouldn't water. If it's below five, it's time to water. If it comes out at five, well, it's kind of iffy. Maybe you water tomorrow when it's dried a little bit more. So that's how this works, and each plant has a different number. And there is problem number one. What if your plant isn't on the list? Then you don't know what the numbers mean and you don't know when to water. For example, I'm growing a lot of streptocarpus right now. It wasn't on anybody's list. Now, if you know a plant that's similar to that, for instance, in this case, African violets are very similar to streptocarpus. African violets were on the list, so I can assume that they have the same number. There are also a few tricks for actually taking the measurements. Remember, it's important to get current running from the tip up here. So you have to put it in the soil a fair amount. In fact, I'd recommend at least two inches. If it's less than that, you get a wrong reading. So it has to go in two inches. A lot of pots will have moisture sitting at the bottom. They have this water layer here. So don't go all the way to the bottom either because you'll get the wrong reading. You have to find a sweet spot in the middle, sort of between the two and three inch range. 
The other thing people like to do with this is they like to put it in here and just leave it in the pot so they can just come and take a reading every day. But that's not a good idea. These probes should remain dry. If you keep them wet all the time, they'll corrode. You know, I'll show you a picture of a couple probes here. Some are quite shiny, they're new. And then there's one there that's been corroded quite a bit. As they corrode, it changes the value. So once the tips are corroded, the meter is pretty much useless. So don't leave it in soil all the time. Take it out when you're finished, clean it off a bit, keep it dry. Now let's look at some limitations of this meter. The first one I'd like to talk about is you're a plant collector and you've got lots of plants. So let's say you have 20 plants. Each one has a different moisture number. So are you going to memorize all those so that when you go through your collection, measuring them one after the other, you're going to remember this is a three and this is a seven and this is a five? I don't think so. And unless you do that, you really don't know what the meter's telling you. Another issue is the accuracy. What I've done is put together six tests for evaluating how well these meters work. And I've put those together in a separate video. And I'll put a link to that at the end of this video in the top right hand corner. It's worthwhile going through that test. But what the test tells me is that the accuracy is not that great. For instance, if you measure near the edge of a pot or in the center of a pot, you'll get different readings. If you compress your soil more, you'll get different readings. If you water with pure water, like rainwater, it has very little salts in it, you'll get a different reading than if you water with fertilizer. Different kinds of soil will give you different readings. So for example, let's say you have a planter outside and you've used soilless mix for that. And you put some marigolds in there. Marigolds might be on the list so you can measure when you have to water. Then you take the same marigolds and you also put them in your garden soil. But that garden soil is clay soil or maybe it's sandy. Whatever it is, it's unlikely to be similar than the soilless mix in your containers. Marigolds in a container will give you different number than the marigolds in soil. Using this meter in soilless mixes and in garden soil means that you have to calibrate it for each one. There's lots of variables that affect the movement of current here. So the accuracy is not great. It's an approximate reading. In fact, when I tested my meter, I have a scale here from one to 10 but it never went below 2.5 and it never got to 10, no matter how dry or wet my media was. So my scale is actually only two thirds of what the whole scale appears to be. That means it has less accuracy than you think it has. Now it'd be really nice if these meters came with a little calibrating screw. So I could calibrate the meter down to one and up to 10, but none of the ones seem to have that. There are many variables that affect your reading. So consider this meter as only giving you an approximate idea if you should water. Don't start to rely on it exclusively. So do soil meters work? Well, sort of. They do give you a reading, and as the soil dries, the meter will give you a different reading. The accuracy is not great, and the reading you get has to be interpreted by you and every plant and every soil combination has a different meaning. So just because the needle gets to five doesn't mean you water all your plants. There's lots of people who get online and put a comment that goes something like this. I've been using one of these moisture meters and relying on it and I killed my plants, either because of overwatering or underwater. I see that as a big problem. New gardeners think these are perfect and they rely on them. Now what about the nursery industry? Do they use moisture meters? Well, they certainly wouldn't use something like this because this is just too inaccurate. But there are better moisture meters out there. They're more expensive, they're more accurate, they're more reliable. But guess what? Most nurseries don't use them because they're not accurate enough for them to grow good plants. The other thing you should know is that any experienced gardener would never think of using one of these. Once you have experience watering plants, you don't need it. And that should tell you a lot. If you want to become a good gardener, don't start relying on one of these meters. All right, so if you don't use a meter, what do you do? Well, it's really quite simple. There are two ways to measure your soil. One is with your finger. You simply stick it in and wiggle it around a little bit. 
Now, at first that may not mean much, but with experience, you'll know exactly when to water that plant. I know that some of you have really nice nails and you really don't want to do that. There is another way, and most experienced gardeners don't really use their finger. What they do is they just lift a pot. It's called hefting the pot. And I can pick up a pot like this, and I know right away whether it needs water. When it's dry, it gets very light. When it's wet, it gets much heavier, and I can easily tell the difference. And then I look at the plant itself. I have to understand the plant. So if this is a cactus and it's winter and I know it likes to be dry and I lift it and it's pretty light, I know I can leave it for another couple days. If it's one of those plants that don't like to dry out at all and I lift it and it's starting to feel a little dry, I, I water right away. So I still adjust it for each plant a little bit, but all I have to do is pick it up. Now, personally, I use both. I'll stick my finger in here, particularly in the garden, right? It's really hard to lift the garden up. So in the garden, I tend to use my finger and just feel the soil. In the house, I, I usually just lift the pot a little bit. So here's my recommendation. If you want to learn how to garden, don't get one of these. And if you have it, give it away to somebody else. Learn the water based on the weight or your finger. If you're interested in the details of the tests that I use for measuring this, I'll put a link to that video in the top right hand corner. I also have a very popular video on watering, telling you when to water, how to know how to water, and some watering myths. And I'll put a link to that video in the bottom corner. Watering your plants is not nearly as difficult as it seems. Happy gardening.